This is the old depot. This is where the Chamber of Commerce is, and then they have a visitor center and museum. The website says it opens at noon today, and it's one o'clock, so let's see if they're open. Not looking good. It's Sunday, it's one o'clock, and they're not open. Oh well, at least they have this little train park that is connected to the Depot Museum and it is open and we can go and check that out. And look, they have like little trains in the summer for the kids that go around. We'll have to come back. We're definitely going to have to come back here since everything's closed today. And I am really trying hard not to let this get me down. I am not going to have a bad day. I love trains. I'm obsessed with them. And especially cabooses. I think it would be so cool to actually get a caboose and turn it into like a little tiny house. I think that's like my dream. I would love that. Let's go check this one out. It's all green inside. Little seats for everybody. Look how cute that is. Oh, I just love these things. Well, and look at this white one. That one's interesting. It's got a little area that kind of juts out. You could put your um, kitchen sink right there. That could be your window for your kitchen. Let's go check this one out. Well, I don't really like this one. It doesn't look like it's got a lot of space. Let's go in this one. This one is super rusty. Actually, they're all kind of rusty. So I have my significant other Greg with me today because I don't go to these sites on these trips by myself anymore. It's not safe. And we both thought we were going to be able to get inside of that sucker and look at it. But unfortunately, it's all boarded up because as you can see, it's super rusty. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they don't want people in there. But you guys, I wanted a better view, so I'm going to get on top of these rocks. Now that's the car you'd want to turn into a house. Look how long that sucker is. Snow. <laughs> right? That is snow. I love it. I love watching it. I love watching trains plow through snow. Oh, I just love trains anyway. I could watch a train just go down a concrete sidewalk. Oh, I would love to go in there and have a drink. Nice little glass of wine. Listen to some jazz music here on the river. And here we have a Lewis and Clark marker. Now they did not stop here at Atchison. They actually stopped upstream at a place called Independence Creek on July 4th, 1804. Look how icy this water is. This is the Missouri River and it begins up in Bozeman, Montana. And it travels 2,300 miles to St. Louis where it dumps into the Mississippi River. I wonder how far those chunks of ice go before they actually melt. Do they make it all the way down to New Orleans? 
Well, this is kind of cool. This looks like a piece off of the USS Arizona. Now, that ship was bombed in Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. And I guess that is a little area where you can actually touch it. I'm not sure. And I honestly, I don't know what type of piece this is either. Very informative. And that number, 1,177, that's how many sailors perished on the USS Arizona. This is as close as you can get to that old bridge. There's a really old house. I've really tried hard to find out what this is. It may be a depot, but I actually think it's a company section house. That's where the railroad workers would stay in between runs. But look, it is so close to the tracks. I mean, it is right outside the front door. One thing's for sure, when we come back up here and I get into that museum, I am going to ask about this place. We've come to the downtown area and I gotta say, its storefronts are not empty. Sometimes you come to these little towns and the downtown area is not being utilized, but not here in Atchison. And this town was incorporated on August 30th, 1855, and it has some amazing houses, some amazing architecture. And I thought we could take a real quick spin and see a few of those. be closed for no apparent reason. Oh my goodness, look at that. the grounds of Benedictine College and this was a college that was established in 1971 when two colleges combined. It was St. Benedict's College for Men and Mount Scholastica College for Women. This abbey has 53 Benedictine monks and it is the most peaceful place on earth according to Mildred Ebner. I don't know who she is but she's right.
I am absolutely in love with this building. This is the back of St. Benedict Hall, and it is a Tudor Gothic that was built in 1910. And on the bottom floor, they have their theater arts department, and that includes a 135-seat theater. And then on the upper floors, they have various administrative offices, classrooms, conference rooms. This is absolutely beautiful. Wow. Now I've already done a video on this Kansas Lodge and if you'd like to see that I'll leave a link at the end of the video. But what I'm showing you here, and this was an amazing place by the way, what I'm showing you here is their beautiful markers. Again, they are on point with the markers and letting you know. Look, look at that. That's all I need to know right there. That's it. We can leave now. I thought we would end our day up here at the Amelia Earhart Birthplace Museum. Now it's closed. I knew it was closed. I never had any intentions of going to it. Um, there's actually a new museum. It's called the Amelia Earhart Hangar Museum. And I was waiting for that to open before we went to both of these. But there are some really cool houses up here. It's a nice little house too. This is the house that's on the corner, and I'm pretty sure this is a Queen Anne, and it reminds me so much of all the houses in the area where I grew up. It's kind of making me homesick. Just a neighborhood of really cool houses, including Amelia Earhart's birthplace. And I'm gonna be really mad and upset with myself because I got nobody else to blame. I guess, I don't know. This is a window at the Amelia Earhart house and I just think it is beautiful. Look at how cool that is. I wonder if that is original to the house or if that was added in later. I guess we'll find out when we come and visit. And while we're here, we might as well go ahead and check out this plaque. It says Amelia Earhart Birthplace Museum. Amelia Earhart was born July 24, 1897 in the home of her grandparents, Alfred G. and Amelia Hares Otis. The home was constructed circa 1860. The Birthplace Museum is owned by the 99s Incorporated, International Organization of Women Pilots. That's cool. Okay, even though these museums up here are closed, it's okay, because look at this view. This is the view that Amelia Earhart had, so yeah, I see why she wanted to fly. Look at that. That is really beautiful. So, so pretty here. Well, this little adventure didn't turn out so bad. Not as bad as what I expected the first thing when we got here. Don't forget to hit the like button because I'm sure you learned something today. I did. See you guys next week.